the clavicle. The clavicle, or a collarbone, is one of the two bones that form the shoulder girdle. Clavicle itself is located on the uppermost part of the chest wall. As a bone, it is easy to recognize as it has its distinct letter S form, shaping itself into two distinct curvatures. Medial, two-thirds of the bone are convex in a forward direction, whereas the lateral third of the bone is concave oriented forward. The superior aspect of this bone offers no additional anatomical details. This surface of the clavicle is subcutaneous and through palpation one can identify its convex and then later concave curvature following the bone all the way to the lateral end where it makes the joint with the scapula. Clavicle has two ends, the medial end through which clavicle makes the joint with manubrium and the lateral end of the bone or lateral extremity through which clavicle makes the joint with the scapula. They are easy to differentiate as the lateral end appears to be flat whereas the medial end of the bone is more massive which exactly corresponds to shape of these two joints that the clavicle makes. As mentioned earlier, no additional anatomical details are to be identified on the upper surface of the clavicle. However, should we turn this by 180 degrees and look into clavicular underside, going from medial to lateral direction, we're finding the following features of this bone. On the underside of the clavicle, next to its medial end, one can observe this indented area which is attachment of costoclavicular ligament. That is a ligament which runs between upper surface of rib number one to the underside of the clavicle, preventing excessive clavicular elevation at this joint. At the midpoint on the clavicular body or shaft, there could be more or less visible attachment of the subclavius muscle. On this specimen, such a groove is not completely visible. As we go towards the lateral end of the bone, there are two distinct details that the clavicle will offer to us. One is known as the conoid tubercule and it looks like it has been continuous with this bony ridge, the trapezoid line. So this is the conoid tubercule and this is the trapezoid line. Both landmarks serve as the attachment points for the same name ligaments. The conoid ligament attaches here and the trapezoid ligament attaches here. Both ligaments attach to the coracoid process of the scapula and they are used to solidify joint between the clavicle and its acromial end and part of the scapula which is known as the acromion. Finally, we need to identify articular surfaces on the clavicle. On its medial end or medial extremity, there is a large articular surface that the clavicle uses in order to make the joint with the manubrium of the sternum. The joint is called sternoclavicular joint. It is classified as synovial joint and it is ball and socket joint. Although one can immediately notice that there is a huge discrepancy in the size of medial end of the clavicle versus size of the clavicular notch, stability to that joint will be added by placing intra-articular disc that will be both attached to the medial end of the clavicle as well as to the end of the clavicular notch of the manubrium. On the lateral end or on the acromial end of the clavicle, we can see much smaller articular surface which is virtually flat that's why we call it facet through the facet lateral end of the clavicle will make the joint with a chromium process of the scapula let's bring the scapula into picture and let's demonstrate how this joint will be formed this is only to illustrate 
attachment of the lateral end of the clavicle, the acromial end, with this massive projection of the scapula, which is called acromion. The joint is considered to be flat synovial joint, facet joint, and it would be used to allow rotation of the scapula permitted by quite loose attachment to the lateral end of the clavicle.